Hi there, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another espresso project. So again, a project that will be quick and small, but definitely fun to make. Uh, so this is what I call my small waterfall folio. Uh, in the inside, we will have a little waterfall for some smaller photos. So that's why the name. And for decorating it, I've used the new digital collection from Knitwit Collections called Gnome for Christmas. Totally adorable. Like the title says, it's all about the gnomes. And you will find some traditional Christmas colors in here. And uh, definitely worth checking it out. So if you're interested in this collection, I have a link down below in the description box towards the bundle for this uh, gorgeous and cute collection. Uh, so I went with a lot of the red from, the, from this collection. And um, the folio measures 6.5 inches by 4.5 inches and has a 5.8 inch spine or gusset, however you want to call that in this case. And what I did is this flap here that will hold it close. I've magnetized it using the gnome here to help me out with that. And then I have this Christmas tree from the collection. Um, which I didn't glue down completely. So if I want to, I can still place a photo or a journal card or a little something behind here. Uh, for now I haven't done it yet. So let's place this back. So when we open it up, this is what we have. So on this side we have some flaps with uh, angled pockets. And I've used another gnome from the collection to make a little tuck space here as well for a smaller photo. And then behind in the angled pocket, if you want to, you can fit full size photos with a background mat. So I have not done anything on the back and you can place more than one in here, but I left it with one for now. And then when we flip it, we have on the back side, again, you could place a full size photo on this flap. I did some smaller one that I decorated a little bit. And then here we have actually the same thing. So again, that angled pocket where you can fit a full size photo. And I made a little tuck space here from this gnome out of the collection. And when we open it, you have the same thing there on the back. And what I did here is when you buy the bundle, you also get the alpha, alpha. I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, with all the letters and the numbers in it. And they used a really cute check pattern uh, here on the number. So I've printed out the number 2 and the 5 to make the 25. And decorate that photo here a little bit more. And then on the middle we have a stack pocket. And in this stack pocket you can fit a full size photo with a background mat if you want to. It's a little bit of a tight fit, but um, it will fit. So if you want to, you can do that. I have not done any photo mats in here, but I did have this journal card that says warm wishes. So I find it's a little bit more for a, uh, for a card or something, but I do have it in here. With, I didn't back it with anything. It's just in there. So these are the flaps on the left si side of the, of the folio. And then here on the right hand side of the folio, we have that waterfall. And again, um, in the tutorial, you will see me making this closure with a piece of acetate, but eventually it was just annoying me. So I ripped it out and I redo it with some cardstock. And you will find the measurements for it in the cutting guide. And I've used another gnome here just to decorate that flap a little bit more. So that is magnetized. And then I've used some decorative paper on here. Um, so what I did is on the top of the flaps I did decorative paper and then on the, on the bottom of the flap I did photo opportunity. But you can definitely turn this into photo opportunity as well. And these are squares that are also in the... I believe they were in the FQP but I'm not sure anymore. But you can find them in the, in the collection. Really cute square pieces that you can use for really a lot of different purposes. So this is just how I've decorated it quickly. And then you could do another photo here or something decorative if you want to. So that is the waterfall and actually that is the whole folio. That's all that is to it. Um, like I said, it comes together quick and pretty easy. Uh, so like always for these projects, you can find the cutting guide on my website scrappingcoffee.com. The link is down below in the description box. It's a free PDF download. And the tutorial will follow right after this. So I hope you're going to try it. And I hope you're going to enjoy it. So thank you for watching. And the tutorial will be right now. Okay, this folio will come together really quick. And you only need a few pieces of cardstock. So I've prepared all of my pieces. And first piece is piece A. And on piece A you have four score lines. So there 
two with a gusset, five eight inch gusset, and right here with a five eight inch gusset. So this is going to create our base. You can fold and burnish towards the bumpy side of your piece. And just have an eye on the fact that your edges are lined up there. So this is going to create your base where the short flap is going to be your closure. It's a little bit of a short piece, but in this way I could do it out of one 12 by 12 piece. And you can use a magnet, a swing tab. You can think of all different kind of closures to keep it closed later on. So next up we have two flaps, piece B and C. So they are almost the same. Uh, only one has a quarter inch gusset and the other one has a one eight inch gusset. And for both pieces, You've placed your tape on the dented side between the cut edge and your first half inch score line. And we will taper that half inch part. So you taper from your first score line towards the cut edge. Cut with, a, with an angle. So that your gusset area is going to stay intact. And then also on these pieces, you can fold and burnish towards the bumpy side. Okay, so again, these, before I'm going to attach them in the base, I will first make the pockets that go on top of them, which are your pieces D. So pieces D are going to form pockets and you have score lines on three sides. Tape will go on the dented side on all three sides, but I haven't done it here because I'm going to cut an angle in my pockets. I've mirrored the pieces. So on one piece, I'm going to make a pencil mark from the cut edge on my left hand side at two and a quarters from the cut edge. Two and a quarters and then on my right hand side I'm going to measure on the score line from the bottom cut edge two and a half inches and I will connect those marks to cut off that angle in my paper trimmer. So on this piece I will do the same thing only I measure from the other side. So here I measure from the right hand side two and a quarters on top and on my score line on the left hand side I measure two and a half inches from the bottom mark that and connect your pencil marks so you can cut them with your paper trimmer or with your scissors So I need to place my tape right there and basically with these pockets my angle might be different than my original piece I'm not sure um, it doesn't really matter just do what looks good to you you don't have to make this angle you can do something else you can keep them straight it's all up to you and what do you like So I place it where it hangs over so I have nice coverage of tape all the way to the cut edge and then I will cut my overhang away. And then next up what I'm going to do is I'm going to miter the corners. So where uh, on the bottom here where my score lines intersect I'm going to cut with a 45 degree angle towards that intersection or through that intersection to cut off the corner. I'll do that there as well and then here on top I will also taper the half inch just for hiding construction a little bit I don't think it's even really necessary there but and I will do the same thing for this one and then again fold and burnish
Okay, so we have the two pockets and we have our flaps, our pieces B and C. And um, for piece B, I have my flap on uh, my right hand side and I'm going to get the pocket with the angle on the left hand side. At least that's what I'm thinking. And I'm going to do it like this. No, I'm going to do it like I said it. So on piece B, my flap is on the left hand, right hand side and the angle is on the left hand side. And I'm going to line it up with the cut edge. So, starting at the bottom. And you should fit exactly up to the score line here where your uh, gusset area is still visible. And then we, I, at least that's how I do it, I will attach my sides. So that one is prepared. Now I'm getting PC in. I have my folded flap on the left hand side and the angle of the pocket on the right hand side and I'm going to do the same thing. So again I'm lining it up with the cut edge and then it should fit up to your first score line. So now we have these flaps completely prepared. I'm going to get my base back in. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to attach my flaps when it's open with my closing part on the right hand side. I'm going to place it on the large part on the left hand side. And what I'm going to do is, and you can change this around if you want to. But I'm going to place the flap with a one inch gusset along the cut edge. So I'm going to fold on my half inch score line. Remove the tape backing a little bit. And then when you think you got it, you can remove your tape. So we have that one in place. And then my other one, I'm going to open this up. I will place it just along the score line here. So again, I'm folding on my half inch score line. Find my score line here. You're not going to attach anything on that gusset part, but you're going to place it where you just meet up with that score line still want to be able to see the score line bring it where you want it and once you've got it remove your tape I'm terribly sorry if you can hear all the background noise it's always hard for me to um, see how much of that you can hear okay so we have this in place and then here on that middle part we're gonna create a stack pocket so for that you have your pieces E and F. So let's prepare these pieces. So piece E is a normal pocket with score lines on three sides and taped on three sides. We're gonna mire the corners where our score lines meet. Like that. And then piece F is a pocket, score lines on three sides, but you've only placed your tape on the short side, so on the left and right side. Then I'm going to turn my piece sideways and I'm going to cut just above my half inch score line from the bottom. Just above it, I want to cut the score line away up to your intersection. And then from the bottom, you're going to cut with an angle to cut that out. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm cutting straight just above the score line to cut that score line away and then from the bottom I will cut with an angle and then this is what that would look like and then on this one you're only going to fold on your side flaps like 
like that. We do nothing with that half inch here on the bottom. And then for piece E, you will just fold and burnish all three score lines. Okay, so I'm going to open up my folio. I will open up the flaps that we've just attached and we are here on that middle part. Starting with piece E, I'm going to align it along the bottom. And what you want is to fit in between the score lines of your flaps. The half inch score lines of your flaps. And with the measurement you should fit with a really little bit of space on both sides. So just try to center it. So I'm placing my bone folder on there to keep this flat, as flat as I can. And then I'm going to align it along the bottom. Having my eyes on, that, on those score lines. Stick the sides down and then for piece F we are going to slide this bottom half inch in that pocket up to the score line and then we are going to check if our sides are again not going over the score lines. I'm good. So I'm going to remove the tape backing here. Slide it in that pocket. And stick that down. And there we have a stacked pocket here. So closing this one, closing that one. Now we're going to work here. We're going to make a waterfall. So for that you have six pieces of G. I've prepared five of them. So piece G has a one score line. I've placed my tape on the dented side. And I'm going to fold towards the bumpy side to create my little hinge. And like it said in the cutting guide, you've cut it a hair under four and a half inches. So when we're going to place it on this larger part here, it's going to fit in between your score lines again. You want to make sure that that fits. If it doesn't fit, you might want to cut down a hair more. You really want to make sure that that all functions properly. So mine is good. So I'm going to turn it sideways because that's the easiest way for me. I'm going to remove my tape backing slightly and I'm going to have my eye on that score line here and on my top cut edge. That's where I'm going to align it with. Okay, so I'm happy with that placement and I stick it down and I'm going to do this for all my six flaps. So again when I place my second flap I am basically going to align it with my score line here to keep it straight. So I don't bother too much about the attachment flap from my previous piece. Because sometimes your cardstock is not completely straight so and then you get a wonky waterfall. So you can close the flap, the previous flap to line it up with before you stick it down completely. And this is what I'm going to do for all my flaps. Okay, so when all my flaps are in place, I'm going to re-burnish those folds. The more you burnish it and you break down the fibers, the more function it will have. So you have about a half inch left here on the bottom from your last flap and that you can use to make to attach something to keep it closed. So you can do that with a piece of cardstock. I'm actually thinking about maybe doing a piece of acetate here with a, for example a gnome element on top of the acetate that's going to keep it all closed. Um, so I haven't thought about it yet but uh, there are many many ways to keep your waterfall closed. Okay, so I have a piece of acetate and I think mine is 5 and 5 eighths of an inch. So let me score it at 1, 2, 3, 4, yes, at 5 and 5 eight and 1 eight. I'm 
trying to fold it towards the bumpy side basically. I'm not sure how well this is going to hold up with that gusset, but okay. So after it's a little, it looks a little, a little weird after folding. <laughs> But I can stick that down right there. Let me see if I can still get a piece of tape on here. Okay, so my piece is one and a, and a quarter inch wide. Um, so let me see if I center it. I have one and five eighths, one and a half. Okay, something like that. So I'm just trying to find the center a little bit where I can uh, make a little tick mark on where I want to place this. So you can also do this with cardstock, right? You don't have to do this with acetate. And I'm just aligning it along the cut edge. And I will hide this with pattern paper, of course. And then I will do something with a magnet here. To keep that how I want it. Okay, so now it's not going to stay now, right? <laughs> so we can close this and we can close this and then our folio is constructed. So really quick, really simple, but um, a fun folio. You can fit full size photos in these pockets or some smaller stuff. You can place full size photos here if you want. And some smaller photos in these pockets. And then uh, this waterfall is for 3 by 4 photos. Uh, so yeah, I think it's, uh, it's quick and it's fun. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.